Okay, it's been a while. I think it's time to finish this uh, 0 to 60. And I think I stopped in uh, 97. So 97 was when I arrived to Canada. I think it was August 18, 1997. And I flew into uh, Montreal. And then I took another plane to uh, Toronto. And that's where I settled down. So first couple of weeks were crazy because I had to get do the, the documents, I had to find an apartment and I remember I was, uh, I was not sure how the public transit worked so I spent a bunch of money on taxi because uh, wherever I, I would go I would order a taxi and back then there was no Uber so I just used a regular taxi kind of like you know because I had money I came with uh, 30 grand Canadian which seemed a lot and then when I was putting money into the into the bank, the bank says, uh, you wanna put everything in the savings or checking or something? And I never had experience before that. And the guy says, we have a mutual fund, you know, like a bank mutual, bank's mutual fund. I said, okay, let's put it in a mutual fund. And we put like $20,000 in there. And guess what, in, in three months, when I needed the money, I was taking it out, and it was like twenty-two thousand dollars. You know, so so that was a. I got lucky that, and I, I bought my first computer. I bought a compact laptop, and I did not like it for some reason. I exchanged it for a Mac, like a desktop Mac. I always like desktop computers better, and. That one, I think, was like an old model that was already discontinued. They never told me that. But anyway, so I think after that, I I had a whole bunch of computers. Dell, quite a few years I had Dell. Like, you know, each couple of years I would buy a new one. They were great. And then eventually I switched back to, I switched to Mac, like 100%. And uh, so job-wise, I remember it took me like six months to find something every morning i would go out and buy newspapers and just look in the look at the classifieds i could never find anything and so i think my first job was uh, i just went to the insurance insurance school and i got my insurance license for some reason i i, I was too bored with the real estate i didn't want to do real estate with which i did in in moscow for five years and then i um, i also applied at a stock broker school you know just a, you take a course and it was like 400 bucks but again i to me it seemed a bit complicated and i was afraid it would be difficult to make money as a stockbroker because it's all commission right and so I ended up with insurance and I worked at a couple of companies one of them was called London Life it was kind of like the worst period in my history in Canada I almost I, I had no money zero like zero you know I didn't have money for a bus I didn't have money for uh, for a food you know it was it was awful. I didn't have money to pay rent. The guy, the guy almost kicked me out. I was renting a room, so it was like the worst. But I was wearing a suit, and I had the laptop, and I, you know, I, I worked in the office. So uh, anyway, like my mom always said, Sergey, I want you to wear a suit to work. Like that's what her dream was for me to be an engineer or a teacher or something, right? And so uh, then I my situation improved when I joined the future shop which later was acquired by Best Buy and so I started working in sales retail sales selling basically phones regular phones cell phones uh, cameras you know it was that kind of a department and it was cool it, I enjoyed it but the money was not great because I'm, some guys were making a killing over there like selling big TVs and stuff but I wasn't doing too good and so my situation improved further when I started driving so I started driving uh, for us for a delivery company um, no first I drove I, I bought like a cargo van 
yeah, I, I, I bought a cargo van and uh, I was like an owner operator for some for a couple of Korea companies. Could make any money, so the Jeep, the, the van was repossessed eventually. But then I started driving like a five ton truck for uh, for some delivery companies, and then eventually I got uh, again the money was like 15 bucks an hour, and then I I I. Um, so this was like regular G license, but this was Ontario. So in Ontario, G allows you to drive a small truck, actually same as class five here in Alberta. And over there to drive a bigger truck, you need the uh, air brakes endorsement, which in Ontario is Z, uh, where here it's Q. And so I got that Z, you know, I think that was like my smartest idea because I had no truck driving experience per se, you know, maybe like a couple of hours somewhere at the farm in Russia, but like big trucks, right? So I knew that I wanted to get it done um, step by step. And so first when I had G, so I was still driving a truck, so I got Z. I, I, I found the course, paid the money, I think it was like 200 bucks, 150 bucks and spent some time in the classroom and then I did a test, got my Z or Z. So now I had GZ or GZ. So now I could drive a truck with air brakes, but like a small truck, right? And then after that, I went in and I got D. And D you don't like, which is like class three over here. And D you don't need, uh, I didn't go to any school. Yeah, I just took, uh, all I had to do was just, I think it was an uh, exam on the computer test and then driving test. And driving test was easy because I already had Z, because otherwise you'd have to do like D and Z together and they're different and actually that air brakes was pretty complicated. There's a lot of numbers you have to remember it. Uh, but I already had Z, so when I showed up, the lady says, oh, you already have the air brakes endorsement. Okay, we're just gonna do D. And the guy where I worked at this delivery company, he uh, lent me the truck for the for the exam. And so I got D. And then with the D, I was able to find a job right away at the temp agency, which paid about $21. So before I was making 15, oops. Now I was making 21, and so I left that company. The guy was pissed at me because, hey, I gave you a truck. And I said, well, if you want, I can pay you. And that's it. And so D, eventually, uh, eventually I made up my mind to get to A, class one, right? And that eventually was, I was hesitating. I was not sure. Some people are saying it's a good job. Some people are saying it's a bad job, you know, like a long haul trucker. But I always wanted to be a long haul trucker, right? When I was a kid, it was my dream. And so 2005, I really, no, 2004, I started doing it, went to school, did the took one test, fail. And took, went to school again took another test, failed. And then I ran out of money, so I couldn't do it anymore. So I, I said, okay, I'll do it later. And the next year, I think it was 2005. So I was making some money, right, with this. Uh, I think I worked at, uh, where did I work? I also worked at, in towing. And because I had DZ, they liked me and they put me on the same truck I'm driving now here, like a Freightliner with a tilt and load uh, deck, you know? And uh, yeah, and so eventually I, I took more, more training, went to another school and third time, as they say, three times is the charm took the test third time and I got it. I got it and I became a trucker. So this was 2005. I was 43 years old, right? Yeah, so 43 years old, that's when I, I became a uh, professional driver.
sorry, I stopped because somehow it felt like I already did it before. And now I'm at home and I checked on my computer. The last episode was published in August on August 13th, 2024, and it was episode seven. And I always put years in the in the description, like what years does this video cover? And it says 92 to 97. So pretty much that was when I immigrated to Canada. And so, so it's, um, I'm not repeating myself. Even though I mentioned many of these things before, like uh, there was a video, how and why I came to Canada, where actually I went and I found the hotel where I spent the first few nights. And then I found my, um, the house where I was renting the apartment near the lake in Etobicoke. Um, but yeah, so first few years were really, really tough, especially when the money ran out, the money that I came with. And, and so my situation definitely improved when I started driving and the, the heavy and bigger trucks I drove, the more money I was making, right? And so, as I mentioned, I got DZ class three with air brakes. And then in 2005, I finally got my class one or AZ. And so that was like three times that the third time I was taking the test, I was so nervous, but uh, I went to the school where I was paying them like, I think 50 bucks an hour for just driving. I said, guys, I don't need any classroom, nothing. I just want, I'll pay you. I just need to um, uh, take more driving lessons until I feel I'm ready for the test. And they didn't mind, you know, okay. So it was just a flat fee, 50 bucks. And it was a Russian guy. And he had an old uh, Kenworth, like a classic Kenworth uh, truck, which was like, I don't know, 20 years old with uh, like a 53 foot trailer. And that's what we're doing. You know, I would just pay them up front. Let's say I want, I don't know, two hours. I give them hundred bucks and they send me out with the instructor. And so I think I took probably, I don't know, 10, 15 hours, you know, extra. And then finally I felt ready. But also one of the reasons I went with this uh, last uh, school is because the guy claimed that everybody will pass. And I said, how does that work? And he says, well, we don't do the testing in Toronto or Brampton. We go to, um, what's that town? Near Peterborough, Peterborough, Ontario. But next to Peterborough, there's another small town kind of like where there's lots of, um, you know, people go for the weekend. So next to Peterborough, and he says, uh, that's where we usually go. There's uh, the guy there is a former trucker. The, the inspector is the former trucker. So he's sympathetic to, to people trying to get into this, you know, and he says, we never had an issue. And so we drove there. I think a bunch of guys were in one truck because of course we, you know, had the sleeper and then um, uh, the, this Russian guy, the, the owner of the school. Well, it's the school, you know, it was him and another guy who was also an instructor and one truck. So that was the whole school. But anyway, it was, it was affordable, right? And so, yeah, he was right. So we, I was really nervous, but I passed. I was so relieved. I called my brother 5,000 kilometers away and I was like bursting with joy and pride because, you know, it was difficult you know, jumping from, but at least what helped me is that I was doing it, like I mentioned, that was my whole idea initially, do it step by step so that I'm, I'm not jumping from a car to a big truck because that's how accidents happen, you know? And so I slowly um, build up my confidence, right? For, first by driving a five ton truck, then 10 truck, 10 ton, tandem, you know, heavy, heavy truck with air brakes, and then eventually I got this. And so, yeah. Um, and then the, the job I found, I actually found before I went for this last bout of training, I found this company, Challenger Motor Freight, because they had, uh, you know, it was pretty difficult to find something with no experience, but some companies, they were 
the you know they needed drivers so they had their own training programs and the insurance company recognized these training programs and that's why because of course it's all dictated by insurance right insurance tells them who they can hire but because these guys they, it was a huge company and and they had their own two-week training program the insurance company allowed them to hire rookies right out of the school right and so when i found them i asked them which school shall i go to do you have like a bad school list or good school list and they said oh it doesn't matter as long as you come with a driver's license showing az class one with air brakes and so yeah so i got there okay before i started spending money on training for this third and final time and so they hired me and uh, it was pretty cool so this is 2005 right so again i'm 43 years old you know everything is ahead of me long long routes you know sleepless nights but actually i never drove at night i think maybe a couple of times uh, but yeah it was it was the beginning of a interesting and uh cannot say rewarding but it was a, a beginning of an interesting career and so i stayed with these guys um so I drove the Volvo and the Freightliner, pulling a regular dry van. And they had a specialized um, um, specialized uh, branch where they were doing heavy haul and flatbed and step deck. But they in, for that one, you needed experience. I said, how about you train me? They said, no, we don't have a training program. You must have experience to join that particular department of the company. And so eventually I left because I found this McKinnon Transport because they had, uh, they offered free training for a flatbed and step deck. And by that time, I think I already got, yeah, 2007 when I, when I, uh, left uh i left uh, challenger motor freight and this was in cambridge ontario so i bought my own truck that first yellow international for sixty four thousand dollars it only had like hundred sixty thousand miles on it like three hundred thousand kilometers inside it was like new you know it was uh, pretty much a new truck somebody used it for like two years because this was uh, 2004, I think, and, the, and I bought it in 2007. But the guy said that it was, the sales guy said it was sitting there for a year. So basically they got that truck, so it was a 2004, and they bought that truck, somebody traded in, in 2006. And it was sitting there for a year, and the dealership was right next to 401, you know, the big freeway that goes west to eastern Ontario. And I remember seeing this bright yellow truck. Each time I passed that, this was Woodstock, Woodstock, Ontario. Each time I passed that dealership, and you can see all the trucks from the from the uh, from the highway, I, I was paying attention to that bright yellow International. It just captured my heart, and so I was passing this way, this way, and I look at that truck. And so eventually, I found time. I stopped by, and uh, I said, I want to buy this truck and hold on one second yeah actually i think the price was uh 61,000, of course canadian but they wanted 10 percent down and i still remember i only had three thousand and i didn't even have cash i i think i borrowed borrowed that money from my visa credit card <laughs> but i couldn't find six thousand and so the dealer was very um, wise in the ways of the world. And they said, okay, we're going to help you with a down payment, but we're going to add it to the price. I said, deal. And so they gave, they, they put down 3000 but they increased the price to 64000 So on the contract, it said 64000 which worked for me. So otherwise I wouldn't be able to get into this truck. And they, they also asked me, if maybe I want to try to get a new one. And I still remember the new truck, exactly like that, but 2007. 
was uh, back then was $120,000. Uh -huh. Now imagine now, now to buy a, a simple truck with a sleeper, with a tandem, here in Canada, it costs probably close to $300,000. And, um, but yeah, so that 120,000, I said, how much they want for down payment? He says 12,000, so 10%. And I said, well, I only have three. And so I got that international. And so on the day when I went to pick it up, actually the, the guy from Human Resources, so I already was, you know, with McKinnon, I, I told him, hey, I'm getting my own truck. And, but I didn't have a car, I don't think. Did I have a car? Maybe I had a car, but anyway, so, you know, Woodstock, it's like 50 kilometers away from Etobicoke or from um, from Guelph. So Challenger was in Cambridge and McKinnon was in Guelph, a nearby town, maybe 20 kilometers away. And so the human resources guy gave me a ride from Guelph to Woodstock, which is like half an hour ride, uh, so that I can pick up my truck. And I remember I came there and they were not able to start the truck. Turns out the battery was dead. And I said, well, guys, you, you know, you promised me it will be all safety and stuff. So they, they changed the battery, which is, you know, I think is how many batteries are there? It's expensive, right? And eventually the, the truck started. So it was sitting there for a long time. Like I said, probably a year. Nobody wanted uh, yellow international for some reason. To me, it was a perfect color. And again, inside it was like brand new, like uh, look up my old videos. I, I'm pretty sure I did a video showing the inside of the truck, but it was beautiful. Everything worked. It's like a new truck, you know, except it was 50% cheaper. So 64,000 or 61,000 compared to 120,000, you know? And I was super excited. And so I started working for the McKinnon, just pulling their own trailer first. You know, they had flatbeds mostly. No, wait, uh, they had dry vans. And then uh, they put me in for training. I think it was like two or three days, uh, a little bit of time in the classroom. And then it was, uh, they had a warehouse. So they just, there was an old trailer park there with some garbage cans on the top. And so they taught us how to tie them down and we were doing those exercises, you know, like for a day or so. And then they gave me a flatbed. That was my first uh, experience pulling a platform trailer. So it was a 48 foot flatbed with two axles, large, long spread, 10-1. And it was super cool, you know. I liked that trailer because it's so easy to go around corners. You can park anywhere. And then eventually I got my own trailer and for some reason I decided to go with the step deck and I was confused about all these axle spacing rules. And I got the one with just 60 inch tandem, not like 10 one, but 60. So which of course you're losing uh, on the back instead of 40,000, now you can only load 34, right? And like a good boy, I did my research and actually I talked to dispatch at McKinnon and I said, what do you guys think, 48 feet or 53? And I still remember the lady says, uh, no, one guy said, well, as far as I'm concerned, if you buy a 53 foot trailer, you'll be just dragging that extra five feet all the time behind you. And I said, okay, I'll get the 48. And there's a video on my channel how, um, I went to US to pick it up. So basically the company allowed me. So I was pulling the dry van. I mean, dry van. I was pulling the flatbed and I delivered a load somewhere there in Wisconsin or somewhere there, South Dakota, close to where the, my, my trailer plant was. And we agreed before that they would allow me to load the step deck on top. And the guy at the dealer, at the trailer dealer says, can you pick up two? And I, I thought, wait, we don't have to tell, you know, tell Makina that I'm, <laughs> I'm hauling two trailers. So this guy actually paid me money. Of course, my trailer was free, but for the other trailer, he paid, I think he paid me like $500 because I brought it over. Uh, and so, yeah, we loaded the two step deck trailers on top of each other on top of the flatbed. 
uh, man, I, I did not re recollect. I, I, it's been a while since I remember that. And so that was the start of my career. And the funny thing is that the first day I showed up at work, which just shows you that McKinnon were total idiots. And then eventually they became bankrupt and they ceased to exist. But so the girl in dispatch told me and, the, and her colleague that, yeah, don't buy a 53 foot step deck uh, because it's a waste of uh, space and time and weight. And so the first day I show up with my own trailer, the, the lady says, uh, wait, is that a 48 foot or we need a, or a 53? Because some guy just called us, we need a 53. He, he specifically requested a 53 foot step deck. I said, you're fucking kidding me, right? So I, I talked to you before ordering this. And now when I already have the trailer, you're telling me you need a 53. So, so yeah, it was not a good trailer. My first trailer, it was not good because, because of that spacings, but because of the axle spacings, I was able to go west to Western Canada, right? Whereas, uh, but the thing is though, these guys over there, uh, mostly they were hauling kind of like to and from nearby US states. And mostly it was some cheap stuff, you know, like lumber, bricks, um, you know, stuff for the roof, you know. So it was cheap and they were not giving me good loads. And that's when I discovered that, yeah, it's not a good idea to work as owner operator for a company which also has company drivers because all the good loads would go to company drivers, you know. And instead of giving me some machinery or equipment, and I have a step deck, right? So I can hold something tall. They were giving me all this BS, like, you know, brick and concrete and lumber. And of course there was a lot of topping. And so then I think uh, 2010, uh, they let me go. And I asked a friend, I said, hey, what do I do? And he says, hey, try Landstar. And because I had my own truck and trailer, I signed up with Landstar. And that's where I worked uh, until 2014. And they let me go because they saw a video I did where I, I show how I stopped on the shoulder. And of course, Landstar, they are like anal about safety. And that was one of the rules, you know, sitting duck. Do not be a sitting duck. So no stopping on the shoulder unless you're broken down. And so that's why they let me go. So I joined uh, a Canadian company in Orangeville, Ontario. And again, I, well, I didn't have a choice. I couldn't find anybody else, but these guys also had company drivers. And even though the percentage they offered was like pretty high, it was like 82% or something. But they never tell you that they will be giving you bad loads. All the good loads, again, going to the company trucks, company drivers. And so, yeah. And so I worked for those guys until uh, 2017. Yeah, from 2014 until 2017. And then eventually I started thinking about my own authority because I got tired of all, the, all this BS, you know, like bad loads, uh, cheap rates, and so I started doing it step by step, you know, that uh, US and Canadian authority. And I think in Nove November, November, or December, uh, 2017, I got, I got my own authority and basically I became a carrier. And by this time I already had a Mac, which was the second uh, truck and this one was new. Uh, did I buy it? When did I buy it? Did I buy it with Landstar? No, I bought it when I was with uh, with this Orangeville company. I think. Yeah, and then I got a... Um, oh, and I already had the Kaufman trailer. That was my first uh, RGN. Uh, yeah, I started doing heavy haul pretty much when I was at uh, Landstar, right? Uh, but maybe one month after I bought that nice Kaufman RGN, 55 ton, they let me go. And so, yeah, so I joined uh, this guy in Orangeville with my yellow truck and, and uh, Kaufman 55 ton 
trailer, which was also kind of like orange, you know. And then it broken down. The company gave me a replacement for free. It was dark gray Kaufman. And then I changed the truck to the Mac. And that's how I started basically in 2017. So I started my, my uh, independent carrier life with a Mac. 4XL truck with a small sleeper flat roof. And by this time I already had uh, uh, Fontaine. 55 ton drop side rail trailer and then later I, I I added another axle so basically I had an eight axle setup four axle truck and three plus one trailer so like the only one axle could go up on the Tridom axle three had the, had the air lift and then axle four was a flip so I could just disconnected or keep it on top and i think eventually i just got tired of flipping it all the time so i just kept it down all the time so i was i was slightly I, I think i was like 80 feet long but nobody in the states nobody cared but i did got a ticket in in ontario uh, when that axle was down and so i knew that but i had an annual permit and so i learned that as long as you have your size you know like oversized load even when you're empty, as long as, long as you have those signs, and Ontario will not give you a ticket. So it, with four axles on the ground. But what I did is I would put the flip down, but then I would uh, activate the air lift on axle three. It would go up. And so I only had three axles on the ground just you know, for fuel uh, efficiency. And, but that was probably the best setup. I should have kept it. Um, you know, 4XL truck, 4XL trailer, especially drop side rail. It was awesome. It was awesome. So we'll continue later. So let's stop at uh, 2017 when I became an independent carrier, uh, also known as Sergei Drachev Heavy Hole. That was my uh, trade name.